Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here. Now I don't have my external microphone or any of my goodies. So this is just straight up uh, straight up iPhone 7 Plus with the built-in microphone. But we're gonna do a live show. Haven't done a live show in a few days. And uh, you know, out in the wilderness, because it is the fall. So you can see behind me, you can see the, the trees and the leaves and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, I just want to tune in, do a live show. Uh, a lot of stuff coming, obviously. You know, we got, uh, you know, as as unfortunate as it may be, we're not going to see, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we're not going to see a new drone before Christmas. So that's kind of disheartening. But, you know, DJI teased us with the, with the uh, Phantom 4 Pro Platinum or Phantom 4 Pro Obsidian and the Mavic Pro Platinum. So, you know, that was their way of saying, hey, we're the best drone. We don't have any competition and we're not gonna give you a new drone before Christmas. So it is what it is. But one thing's for sure, there's a lot of excitement that's coming to the channel. So we've got, you know, everything from, uh, from backpacking to uh, just a little bit of everything. So it's gonna be a good, good 2017 end of year and also uh, 2018 so there's going to be uh you know hopefully and again i remain cautiously optimistic but hopefully we will see from gopro we will see the uh you know a second version of the karma you know hopefully hopefully something with a spherical vr camera if we're lucky but i don't think they're going to discontinue the version one of the product because I think, uh, you know, they, they sunk too much money into R&D and it still works. I mean, the Karma works, but the Karma is definitely far from optimal. So, you know, that being said, I think, you know, I think GoPro, <laughs> if they want to get their stock price out of the gutter, I think we'll see something from them and, you know, it needs to be something pretty solid and we just, we haven't seen that, which, which leads us into the, uh, into the GoPro Fusion, you know, GoPro's spherical VR camera that's that's going to hit, uh, actually build a, you can order it now, uh, check out my website, irixsky.com, and you can find uh, links to uh, the GoPro Fusion, which GoPro Fusion, again, is their 360 degree spherical VR, whatever you want to call it, camera, but, you know, I'm still impressed with the, uh, this right here has just been filmed with handheld iPhone 7, a 7S, you know, the big iPhone. And I'm, I'm quite impressed with the stabilization. I mean, this is handheld. I don't have my vlogging stick and microphone because I didn't want to look a weirdo, you know, hiking with all that. Which I don't care what people think anyway, but, you know, still, it's still cool be able to pop a phone out of the pocket and do a live show like this without having to get all the gear i mean this is this is just the youtube app on an iphone uh, 7 plus with the integrated audio here comes some wind check this out see there goes the leaves everywhere there. it is fall meaning that the leaves fall and if you wonder what makes the leaves change color it's called chlorophyll and basically that chlorophyll they have less chlorophyll and they go from green to you know yellow brown uh, yellow and red and those sort of colors and go all the way to uh, go all the way to uh, brown they fall off trees pretty cool Going through a little valley here, so I gotta step out of this. We may have a brief degraded uh, video quality. We'll see what happens. Again, constantly on that goal, uh, you know, to find Bigfoot, but also to burn calories. And so far, since I've started this live show, I've only burned 45, but it's better than zero. <laughs> so. Let's get up this hill here. What's everybody excited about today?
so yeah holidays right around the corner samsung vr very cool now you're talking about the samsung vr camera or is it a headset blue skies and colorful leaves you can probably hear that wind oh the windows vr headset cool so are you going to use it for games or what uh what will you do with it Forty-five calories so far. Games, but I like the VR experience. Very cool. Yeah, you have to let uh, let me know on the channel how that turns out, because that's uh, you know VR, especially with Apple about to get into the mix with the uh, with the iMac Pro, with the video editing. I think we're going to see a lot of cool VR content. I just ran into a tree. That was stupid. That's why cell phones are dangerous. Because see, I was looking at the screen and I hit a tree. Face went into a tree. There comes an ambulance, you hear it? Wow. <laughs> Craziness. Getting good exercise. 52 calories so far. Got a lot of live viewers. Burning calories doing YouTube live Just doing it right so what else we got Samsung VR that sounds really cool um, what uh, for all the nerds out there what's on you know what's your your wish wish list rather for Christmas is there anything anything in particular that that you're excited about or maybe not something you're excited about, but maybe something that that you're getting for someone else. Oh, it's windy. Hear that wind? Super windy. Hope trees don't fall. It's always scary. Man. Pine trees are still green but that's why they're called evergreens. Evergreen meaning forever green, you guessed it. Got some leaves falling out here. 61 calories so far, feeling less fat to be politically incorrect. incorrect. That's the thing today, and obviously I never talk politics on this channel, but you know, the the degree of acceptable political correctness is ridiculous. I mean, why do people walk? Well, they probably walk because they want to lose weight. And they probably want to lose weight because they're fat. But to be politically correct with that statement, um, you know, I don't know. You know, how, how would you say that? I mean, I, I just say it like it is. You know, I'm fat. I got to walk to lose weight and to be not as fat. Because I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat. I don't care. I'm not going to do a diet. That's stupid. But I'm going to walk a lot. So, you know, if I get an extra burrito for lunch, I'm going to walk extra long distance to burn off that burrito. So, yeah, political correctness. I don't know. It's a weird society within which we all live. Where you've got to where you've got to decipher what people say sometimes because they say it in a way that's so politically correct that's like, what does that even mean? So, I'll just say I'm fat, I'm walking, I want to lose weight, but the political correct thing to say would be, politically correct rather, thing to say would probably be, um, hey, B. Ander, Bob, great way to he starts to walk five kilometers a day. Five kilometers a day, man, that's great. That is great. Welcome aboard. I see y'all's comments. This is a live show, so 
you know anything you type uh, B Ander welcome aboard Bob welcome aboard and again that's that's a decent amount of mileage man I do uh, typically on a normal day I'll try to do I do about two point two point seven five miles but today probably do closer to four or five so because I had uh, had a very unhealthy weekend I ate a lot of fried seafood and and uh, drank some rum and a few beers and uh, got to burn that off so what's everybody excited about going into going into Thanksgiving uh, Thanksgiving holiday season y'all gonna do turkey and ham y'all gonna do just the turkey uh, Carl says this is pretty amazing to live stream a hike thanks man yeah, I wish I had brought. Uh, I wish I had brought the monopod and my road mic. My typical, you know, you can check out my. We've probably already seen it. The the blogging rig that I use that I posted on my irisky.com website blog. Typically, I carry that, but today this is just purely audio from within the uh, iPhone 7 Plus, the big iPhone. You know, no external mic and no monopod. This is just handheld. And, you know, again, this is on, this is on a uh, cellular connection. So, actually, it's funny. I just said that because now the, uh, the connection got kind of, kind of flaky. Yeah, the audio, man, that's, that's one thing from, you know, built-in audio in most devices is pretty crummy. But in this, it's not bad. And that's, that's good you say that because, you know, I, I still... When I can use the external microphone, I get a lot better audio. Um, Mark says, did you decide to get an iPhone X? No. And actually, uh, my thoughts on the iPhone X or the iPhone 10 I've heard people refer to it both ways. And some people say the X because they believe that, you know, we'll see an iPhone 9. Because they obviously released iPhone 8 and iPhone X on... Uh, on the, during the same launch event from the Steve Jobs Theater in the new Cupertino awesome Apple campus. I'd love to go out there sometime. You know what? I'd love for them to just call me and say, hey, you know, we know that you're not the corporate job kind of guy, but we want to hire you. And, and I would just go out there and work for Apple and basically just play with all their cool gadgets. But, uh, yeah, iPhone X, iPhone 10. I'm not, I'm not going to get one. And the reason... And, and this is, and again, I am an Apple. I've been accused of being an Apple fanboy multiple times. And that's acceptable because I love Apple products. You know, I've got MacBook Pro. I've got iMac. I've got Mac Mini. I've got iPad. Obviously, i got iPhone. And, uh, oh, HP Campus. Very cool. Where is that in the Valley, too, the HP Campus? But yeah, iPhone X, it, it does have an advantage. The advantage that I see is that it's a, it's a big screen. Oh, that's where they built the new Apple campus. Very cool. Um, yeah, but the iPhone X is a big screen. It doesn't have a home button. And something you may or may not know, if you've used the older model iPhones, I think it was up until about four or five. I forget which, which version they made the cut. But say you're using an iPhone 6S or newer, when you push that home button, it works just like all the old iPhones. But what you may not know is that if you power off your iPhone and then push that home button, it doesn't move. So in 6S or newer, it may have even been in the 5S, I can't remember. But 6S to be safe and newer, that home button is... They use what's called haptic feedback. So it gives the user the sensation that they're depressing a physical button. Where in reality, it's not. It's a haptic feel. So it, it's, it simulates the feel of pushing a button. So that's an improvement, you know, on the newer iPhones with the home button. Because I actually, I had, I think it was version 4, had a home button fail, physically fail, on my iPhone and you know and that was due to the to the uh, real button nature of it 
So the haptic feedback button, home button, is an improvement. Now, also, and a lot of people are on the fence, I find with the 7S Plus, the lack of a headphone jack to be an improvement. Because if I need to use a microphone or a headphone, I just plug in the lightning cable. I've walked a mile. That's not bad. Good deal. 92 calories. Um, but I find, you know, that I'm having to carry a cable anyway. So what does it matter that I've got an extension about that long to allow that microphone or those headsets to plug into the lightning port on the iPhone 7 Plus? It doesn't matter to me. My iPhone 6S Plus, which I was perfect. Sorry about that. I went in in a hole. <laughs> Dead cell spot. You're right. Um, so let's see. I'm going to switch hands here. So yeah, um, yeah, so in a perfect world, I would have, my iPhone 6S Plus would not have gotten water in the headphone jack, and I would have uh, upgraded to the iPhone 8 Plus, the big iPhone 8, because that would have given me 4K, 60, and also wireless charging capabilities. One of my biggest disappointments, and this is true for iPhone 8, an iPhone X or iPhone 10, whatever you want to call it, is uh, is the absence of USB-C. Both of those devices still use the Apple Lightning connector. Not that it's a huge problem. Lightning's cool because it can go in either direction, just like a USB-C. But it's just a finicky connector. And you know, since Apple's gone USB-C with their desktops and their uh, and their laptops. Why don't they give us USB-C in the iPhone and the iPad? So, you know, that's something I would have liked to have seen in both the iPhone 8 and the iPhone X, but, you know, you can't get it all. Whoa, whoa, did y'all hear that? That stick just fell. Almost hit me in the head. Not nice. Yeah, I mean, it almost whacked me in the head gotta watch out you know they call it fall for a reason things are falling out of the trees be careful but i mean i don't know what do y'all think about the iphone x y'all think it's y'all think it's good you let's go get ooh, some leaves back in here look at that all those leaves on the trail everywhere walking through the wilderness in the fall so yeah 111 calories not too bad um 1.23 miles so far so you know again getting uh getting less fat got to get ripped back up um so how do y'all you know when you do when you do cardio or whatever how do you stay motivated is there a system that you use or are you just really self-motivated? You don't have to have a have like a reward system. Walking up a hill, getting good workout now. Look at this. Nice. Nice incline. Yeah, the image stabilization in the 7, 7 Plus isn't bad. Because again, I don't have monopod or anything. I've been doing OMAD since 04. What is OMAD? Carl said that. Lost 12 pounds. That's not bad, man. You can see the leaves falling. I love walking. I look forward to it every day. Steve feels I go out and listen to audiobooks. Oh, September 4th. Wow. That's not bad, man. 12 pounds. September 4th through... What's the day? Oh, one mil a day. Oh, cool. Oh, mad. One mil a day. Man. Now, that does take dedication. I mean, I... Uh, 
I could never do that, man. I'd have to eat. I've got to eat three meals a day. But you know, I tell you one thing. I heard a lot of people, and they say that they've lost a lot of, lot of weight just by cutting out carbonated drinks like a Coke or a, you know, Pepsi or something like that. So that's uh, that's something I may try to do. But I drink one 12 ounce Coke per day. And that's it. So I'll limit it. But if I don't have that 12 ounce Coke, I just don't, I don't have the energy I need. Oh, sweet tea's the devil, man. I love sweet tea. Um, and actually, I would drink it instead of Coke. But it does. Sweet tea is really bad for your teeth. And I don't know if it's the, not necessarily the sugar, but the, uh, It'll really it'll stain your teeth. And that's why I, I stopped drinking sweet tea because I go to the dentist and they have to get all that crap, the tartar or plaque, whatever you call it, and poke around. And I don't like that. Also, the diet drinks seem to mess. Yeah, I can't do the diets, man. Do you get, uh, I think it's called aspartame or something? Um,. You know, a lot of people have this. They don't diet, diet drinks. It just kind of makes them loopy. And actually, I think the diet drinks may may also contain an unreasonable amount of sodium. And that's concerning. Whew. Whew. Getting off the incline there. Leveling back out. I, see, that's when you know you're out of shape you walk up a hill and uh interesting question i wonder if a youtube live you know talking constantly while working out if that burns more calories than just walking and not talking because see it says i burned 149 1.46 miles so you know that's pretty uh pretty good Yeah, Crystal Light's really good. I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed that. And I don't think, is it sweetened with Splenda or anything along those lines? Yep, 152 so far. Cool. Very cool. Again, everyone tuning in, if you're watching this at approximately 4.34 p.m. Jacob, welcome aboard, dude. If you're watching this at approximately 4.34 p.m. New York City time, this is a live show. So, you know, anything you type, I can see in real time. We can chat about it. Today's live show, obviously, is just, you know, walking through the wilderness, seeing the fall colors and talking about technology. So, you know, no real, no real structured format. Anything is free game, obviously. As always, keep it appropriate for all age groups. Oh, you know, you don't want to, that's this that's the thing about this channel. It's, uh, it's clean for everyone. It's not, uh, you know, no, no questionable content. Crystal White has aspartame. Oh, yeah, that's that stuff, man. Something about aspartame, and I forget, there's actually a, and I'm not a doctor, but there's a medical term, a phenophiliacs, I think that's what it is, phenophiliacs, people that are allergic to, uh, to aspartame, you know, it can, it's kind of a mental thing, so. Oh, uh, Jacob, this is an iPhone 10, man, uh, this is, I'm just using my iPhone 7 Plus, the big one. I'm actually gonna hold on the 10 because I'm gonna wait for Apple to put out something that has a USB-C instead of, uh, I'm tired of the lightning connector. So, are you get anybody, anybody on here on the iPhone 10 yet or is it still, still on the fence about it? Hot. 
Sorry about that bounciness. Like I said, I don't have my monopod. It's just handheld. Yeah, Mark, I hear you, man. Seven plus, way to go. Ooh, I just got an achievement. It says exercise ring closed. SE's cool too, man. 165 calories, 1.65 miles. So today I'll do, actually I think I'll end up doing about four miles. And uh, then that way I can just go eat whatever and not worry. You know, do you work out to lose weight or do you work out to maintain? Um, yeah, that's a question that a lot of people have to ask themselves. Do, you know, am I, am I trying to lose weight or am I just trying to not get bigger or not get smaller? And I think with me, you know, it's been more of maintaining. Uh, the AirPods are awesome for walking, no cords to get tangled. You know, that's an Apple accessory I have not picked up. And I've actually been toying with the idea, and I don't know how the battery life in it would be. I've got the Apple Watch Series 2, which I love. But I've, I've toyed with the idea of getting the, uh, the Apple Watch Series 3. So I could not have to carry my cell phone, and uh, and then I would have you know integrated cellular, but also you know using the earpods. You know, in theory, I could listen to a podcast or uh, or just talk on the phone if I needed to. But I wonder how many minutes the in a real world scenario, you know, how many minutes of talk time you could comfortably get with the iPhone or not i'm sorry with the apple watch series three you know that's a you know because you see these numbers online and that's fine and dandy but you got to look at a real world use case you know like right now if i just have my apple watch obviously at least for the current model apple watch i wouldn't have uh airpods way more than i thought very cool is the audio quality good do they seem to suck your do they suck the battery life considerably since they're using Bluetooth or or do they use Bluetooth to, to communicate with your phone? But yeah, a real world use case for the uh, for the Apple Watch, you know, talking on the phone, using Apple Watch only, tracking your workout, you know, maybe sending a text message or two. Yes, they're Bluetooth, it uses almost no battery. Very cool. Yeah, that's important when you're going wireless because it's amazing, you know, not just looking at the Apple devices, but, you know, looking at uh, looking at wireless devices in general, how energy efficient most of them have become. You know, that's, in the past, it was more of a proof of concept, and now we're seeing, you know, now there are exceptions when you're dealing with, uh, you know, like in, in my case with microphones, I personally would never touch a wireless mic and and the reason is is that you know anytime you're using a uh, you know wireless microphone oh very cool I only have to charge the case a couple times a week that's right they charge in the case they don't charge they don't charge by themselves but uh, yeah wireless microphones that's kind of a problem because you know anytime you introduce a wireless component it's potentially going to degrade the audio so you know for that reason I wouldn't use a wireless microphone but as far as wireless headsets concerned that's a different that's a different story uh, they are new wireless charging cases oh cool and I wonder can you charge can you charge them on the uh, and I know it may not be available yet but the the wireless charging base because I know the uh, the Apple Watch Series 3, and then also, you know, obviously the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10, they can charge using that base. Can you charge the AirPods on that? Because that'd be super convenient. Just have a base, you know, put your, put all of your devices on and have them all charge without all those cables plugging around. Yes, with the new AirPod. Oh, very cool. So with the AirPod charging base, can you do your phone and and Apple Watch and AirPods.
I need to check that out. That's a uh, <laughs> toss them on the pad. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, I know something I'm going to put on my on my Christmas wish list for sure. Then that charging base. <laughs> And see, they do this on purpose because then they know once you use that charging base, if you're using an iPhone 7 Plus, the next thing you're going to want is a phone that can wirelessly charge. So, interesting. Funny how Apple does that. That's super cool, though. Whew. Okay. 188 calories, 1.93 miles. And this live show is still going. So, that's cool. A7R3 release compared to the Ace A7R2. Very cool, very cool question. Um, actually, the A7R3, I'm very underwhelmed. And the primary reason is that, uh, you know, I wanted 4K60. You can do 4K60 with the, uh, with the competitor, the Lumix GH5, but you can't do 4K60 with the A7R3. You know, so from that perspective, do I have a real incentive to to upgrade from the A7R2 to the A7R3? Well, the A7R3 does have some advantages, and you know, one of those, one of the primary advantages I see is the battery life. Um, on paper, the batteries are supposed to be, I think it's about I think maybe two and a half times the battery life of the a7r2 battery which you know that's great but in the case of upgrading from an a7r2 to an a7r3 that would require someone to upgrade all of their batteries and if you're like me and you're running you know your field bag you probably got i don't know 15 batteries is there a huge incentive to rush out and upgrade just for improved battery life because then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to rebuy all the batteries you know so what's the advantage there um you know no 4k 60 kind of makes it a deal breaker for me because it's still 4k 30 and uh you know i mean the specs on paper the camera's uh image sensor on the a7r3 and, and maybe i'm reading it incorrectly but it appears that the a7r3's camera sensor may be the same is the a7r2 not that that's a problem it's an awesome it's a rock solid camera sensor i mean i love the a7r2 but am i going to go out and upgrade to an a7r3 just because i get batteries that last longer because i get uh it's got a joystick on the back um i think the the viewfinder may be slightly improved so and I think it'll do, if you're doing it, using it primarily for steals, I think it does 10 frames per second instead of, I think the 7R2 did like maybe five or so, but, you know, I use it, I use it primarily for video. So, you know, my, my personal recommendation would be, you know, if you're, if you're using the A7R2, would be to hold out and see what they bring to the table with the A7R3, A7S3, or the A9R. And I have a feeling that they may not give us 4K60 in anything other than the A9R, which obviously is going to likely command a premium price tag. So I don't know. It just seems they don't want to. Uh, they don't really want to step up and compete with uh, with Panasonic, like it seems that they should. But I mean, I don't know. And keep in mind, though, the GH5, the Panasonic Lumix GH5 is a micro four thirds camera. So, you know, even though it gets 4K 60, yeah, maybe the S3 will be kicked up a notch. And, and see, there's, if, if they follow the same formula with the A7S3 that they did with the A7S2, probably what they'll do is give us a camera with lower megapixel. Welcome aboard, William. Um, they'll probably give us a camera with lesser megapixel count than the a7s a7r3 but hopefully they'll give us better low light performance and hopefully you know fingers crossed 4k 60 because if they release the a7s3 with 4k 60 
then what I would do is pick it up, you know, use it for my for my primary video camera, stick with the A7R2 for stills and a B camera for 4K video. You know, but that having that 4K 60 on an S and an A7S3 would be reason for me to purchase a camera, but not to sell my A7R2 because obviously if they follow the same formula, then the A7S3 is not going to have the megapixel count that the A7R2 or A7R3 does. Uh, welcome. See you later, William. Thanks for tuning in, dude. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Cameras are a weird thing. And what was really weird this year is that Sony came out with, uh, and I forget the names of them. Oh, the, uh, was it AX700? Because I used the AX100 camcorder for a long time, and it was, uh, it was really nice. But then they came out with the AX700, and I didn't even give it 4K60. So, you know, it almost makes me wonder if, if a lot of these camera manufacturers are, are afraid of the, uh, of the compression that they can get for 4K60 video. They may feel that it's, that it's a little bit too far in the future for, for the mainstream uh, video content creators to embrace. Now, you know, my thoughts have always been and will remain if, if, I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna incur the cost and the time to film something, I wanna future proof it as much as possible. You know, and for that reason, I've been filming all of my content in 4K, you know, when it became somewhat affordably available. And I'm glad I did that because now I've got older videos that uh, that that are future proofed. Yeah, Carl made a good point about the overheating. You know, it's funny with the A7R2 when I originally got it a year, several years ago. Now, actually, um, I encountered the overheating issue until I updated the firmware, and then it went away. I've never had an overheating problem with the uh, with the A7R2 with the latest firmware, but yeah, I think it's just, from what I've been told, it's pretty much the nature of the form factor um, of that camera. It just the thermals, it's such, such a tight body that, you know, that's the size advantage for travel, but, you know, the thermals, it heats up. Uh, do I recommend the DJI Spark? Actually, I do. Um, you know, again, it's, it's something that, you know, that y'all have asked me a lot, and I would, I would consider... I would strongly consider the Mavic Pro over that just because when you look at the, the travel size and weight, it's a negligible difference at best. And I would definitely go with the Mavic because you're gonna get the 4K and you're not gonna get that with the, uh, with the at least the current model DJI Spark. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a good drone though. I mean, you want something that's, that's portable, uh, check out my website, irisguy.com. You can find all the drones there. But, uh, yeah, the DJI Spark, it doesn't fold up. The Mavic Pro does. And what you may find is that there's such a, an insignificant difference in travel size and travel weight that you may be happier with the, uh, you know, the Mavic Pro. But, you know, and if I, with the Spark, I think the real advantage to it would be not to get the controller version just to get uh the one without the controller and use the follow me mode because that does a really good job you know and to be able to pull something out have it chase you film a video snap a few photos it's a great platform but uh yeah to try to make it a, a long longer range you know obviously fly in line of sight to be safe and responsible but you know trying to make it a longer range tool then you're getting, uh, you know, what you're, what you're getting at that point is something that, you know, it does have longer range, but because of the, the lesser battery, battery capacity, you're getting into something, you know, it can go out, but, you know, will you have enough, will you have enough battery life to return? So, you know, that's something to consider. And, you know, and for that reason, I would definitely go with the, uh, you know, the Mavic Pro. But if, you know, if you just want to pop it out, maybe fly for a minute or two, get a short video, uh, get a few photos, you know, the Spark, that's a great use case for it. But again, check out my website, iartsky.com, and you can find all the drones there. And, you know, share with others because, hey, dude, hey, Ron, how you doing, man?
welcome aboard um yeah and this is a live show if you're watching this at approximately 4 51 p.m new york city oh no problem drone doing good ron i'm doing good too man fall weather uh 2.49 miles so far 236 calories estimated um you know getting getting less fat because that's the whole objective here you know i can i can go out and live stream burn calories talk about drones talk about technology talk about whatever and uh you know be entertained by y'all and hopefully you know hopefully i provide some some content that's uh, either entertaining and or educational i don't know um yeah just just good weather out here Whew. good workout though you need to try spinning i do it every day you know i used to do used to do road biking religiously outdoors and i loved it but that was before uh before smartphones existed and ever since cell phones and then smartphones came out i got hit by a car once and it didn't do any serious damage to me i was i was sore in the leg for a few weeks but uh it totally destroyed the back of my road bike and that's when i realized that you know this is just dangerous so you know i'm i'm walking now but i need to get back you know like you're saying spinning that's indoors that's safe you don't have to worry well unless your gym's beside the road i guess but typically you probably wouldn't have to worry about a car hitting you if you're on a spin bike um you know a fun game that i like to play is go out to a busy intersection and sit at uh and sit on the corner for five minutes with a notepad or not a notepad but a uh yeah low impact's important dude but to sit there with a the, with my notes and my iphone and just mark off the number of people that i see texting and driving you know that's people going into the intersection people starting off leaving the intersection they start texting after they're moving but you do see a rare handful of people that seem to be semi-responsible and they're texting while they're stopped at a red light but a lot of them you'll notice that even though they put that phone down in their car's console that then you'll see them move and they've got another grip and they're typing while they're driving they're texting while they're driving they think they're doing it covertly but in reality they're not because i know exactly what they're doing and that's just a fun game to play because if you play that game you know then you'll quickly realize you know that uh that you know road biking or any of that's not really it's you know it used to be somewhat safe but you know now because of the texting while driving problem it's it's dangerous so you know just do that i mean if you think if if you think you're not going to see what i see five minutes parked at the corner of a busy intersection you know do it yourself and see what you see because you'll probably uh you'll probably find that uh that it's it's a bad, bad thing. Uh, the average driver has become much more erratic over the past five years from all the texting. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's, it's a scary, uh, definitely a scary trend. And the other thing is, and this is something I'll kind of disagree with, but you know, people talking about the infotainment options, you know, where you're getting, you know, in the dash, you've got Apple CarPlay, which I love by the way, but you know, other conveniences that, that enable hands-free talking and hands-free texting you know while those technologies you know i believe that they're that are beneficial you know some of those they seem to uh they, they seem to distract even more than the phone because you know it's in the dash and not only are you dealing with uh you know potentially dealing with with phone calls and text messages but you're also dealing with streaming services and just all kinds of stuff so it's you know it's uh i don't know I mean, ultimately, it just comes down to common sense. But you know, unfortunately, I think common sense was was something that uh, that failed to exist <laughs> many years ago. I mean, it's you know, it's a, it's a, it's a society that's become overly uh, not just overly obsessed with technology, but a society that that I feel overly utilizes technology. I mean, you know, a lot of people that are watching this live show y'all could y'all could say that you know what i'm doing right now is stupid because you know i'm out when i should be enjoying nature but instead i'm doing a live youtube show so 
you know, do I do I fall into that demographic or is that, uh, I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Carl says, I use a small FM transmitter dongle as a poor man's Bluetooth in my old truck. You know what? And that's somewhat safe because with that, all you're doing in essence is replacing the, uh, you know, a headset or a speakerphone with the built-in audio. So I think that's a pretty safe, pretty safe option. But yeah, it's when you get all the bells and whistles on there where it gets a little bit, uh, gets a little bit questionable. And then, I mean, for the most part, and again, you know, I, I try to keep this channel as, as politically correct as possible, but for the most part, you know, you're seeing, uh, and this, this isn't, this isn't being stereotypical, but this is just looking at raw data. And, you know, I encourage you to, to look at the raw data, but if you look at the raw data of age group and, you know, look at the age group that, you know, let's just say was born year 2000 to present, you'll probably find that the trend among that age group versus an age group from, you know, 20, 30 years prior, that that age group seems to be more, uh, that that age group seems to be less responsible. And I think it's just, again, I'm not, not trying to stereotype here, but because I've got viewers all over the, all over the board, but, you know, just looking at raw data, that's what, uh, that's what I found. And then, you know, also you, you combine that with, you know, the, that younger demographic being more familiar with and obsessed with this technology, you know, that's, that's flooding the roadways with a lot more distracted drivers. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take your advice on that spinning glass because, you know, I'll be sure when I do that I don't go to a gym that has windows right beside it because, hey, just wanted to, let's see, because somebody could be distracted and drive their vehicle through the windows in the gym. Let's see. Got comments, sorry. I'm trying to get these comments pop up here. I love the mixture of technology with nature. Thanks, Mark. Skate guy says, hey, just watched your Karma drone video. My drone should arrive tomorrow. Can't wait. Very cool, dude. Hey, if you haven't checked it out already, check out my website, irixguy.com. You can find all the drones and all the drone accessories there. Just an update. 2.88 miles so far since I started this live broadcast. And, uh, Estimated 270 calories burned, so you know I'll I'll probably eat a modest 800 calorie dinner, but you know looking at it from that perspective, at least at least I got out and uh, burned all these calories, so you know at least I should have when I finish this walk 500 or so calories consumed. That if I didn't do this walk. Let's say I was filming this for my YouTube studio, then I wouldn't have burned calories. Well, I would have burned a few, just talking and moving around, but nothing like this. So, what are your overall views on the Karma? Well, to be frank, I was super disappointed. I love GoPro. Use GoPro cameras, GoPro Hero 2, until present, love them, but the Karma, was a different animal because well the, you know the first one it was recalled due to a uh, due to a p potential safety issue and then they re-released it but they didn't they didn't scrap it what they should have done is discontinued it and designed a new platform because I don't think you know even though they've resolved the safety issue that could cause it to fall from the sky the problem I have with it is that you know, filming in 4K, you don't, at least with the current model cameras, you can't get 4K in linear mode, which if you want to eliminate the fisheye, that's the only way to do it. So, you know, so from that perspective, you know, being able to go out and capture a convincing, you know, high quality 4K video, is just not doable because the fisheye is going to ruin it. So, you know, from that perspective, I wouldn't go with the current model GoPro just because of the camera options that I have to attach to it. Yeah, that's 
that is kind of lame. I mean, right now on today's market, like I've said over and over, Phantom 4, yeah, 1080, man, you'll be fine. But yeah, Phantom 4 is still my favorite drone on the market today. So, you know, that being said, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it does everything I need. I mean, the intro and the outro to most all my videos was filmed with Phantom 4. 4K 30, silky smooth. It's not the latest drone from DJI, but it's the best in my opinion. It's not too big, it's not too heavy. Obviously the Mavic Pro is, is more portable, but you know what we don't have with the current model Mavic Pro is 4K video that's as good or better than, than the Phantom 4. So you know, my, my excitement is centered around Mavic Pro 2. Epic shots of the sea, very cool, man. Can't wait. Shoot me a uh, shoot me a link to your to your YouTube videos when they come out. I'd love to see that. I love the the tropical tropical scenery for sure. But uh, yeah, and I don't, you know, the thing is, I don't think we'll see Mavic Pro two until next year, and that's because you know DJI just doesn't have any competition. So you know, it's like they. Uh, they got cocky and oh you can reach me on my facebook fan page man facebook.com forward slash irix guy that's the best way to get me but uh let's see here two point two hundred ninety active calories that's not bad i'll tell you the apple watch for for one of the coolest and you know not the most current tech but one of the uh one of the newer gadgets out there it's really cool you know just been able to get be able to track workout, track your uh, track your hikes and all that with GPS. It's a really cool device. But yeah, I'm excited to see some new drone stuff. Man, we've had a this is awesome live show. We're already how many minutes in? Almost an hour. This is great. Burning calories and talking about technology, looking at nature. I'll show y'all something here in a minute. This will, this will blow your mind. About to go down to the water, but. Um, yeah, so I don't think we're going to see, you know, anything new from from DJI this year, which is which is definitely disappointing, but you know, again, you can't have everything and you know, sometimes sometimes when there's a delay with the release of the latest tech, sometimes it's a good thing because they can work out all the kinks and they're not just putting it out just to sell it. So, you know, that's uh that's a huge advantage at times. So, let's see. Walking down here. So now I'm out of the wilderness. Let's see. There's a bridge and a river. So if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so. It's youtube.com forward slash irixguy. And this live show and all of my live shows, you can find them on irixguy.com. Uh, after this one finishes encoding, I should have it up in probably about an hour or so from now. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. youtube.com forward slash irixguy. Y'all have a good day.